Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kotsong. This is very insightful, and uh, you've left a lot of food for thought. I mean, we have some postgraduate students. I'm sure that they will get a lot out of this. I want to return to a couple of issues you mentioned. Uh, for Thailand, you know, we have a an average since 1932 a coup every 4.5 years. So 18 successful coups, not counting the unsuccessful coups. But the frequency of coups has decreased markedly. But military interventionism uh, has not declined correspondingly, which is an interesting phenomenon of the trajectories that you, you see the, the seven country cases, right? The South Korea, Taiwan, uh, Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, Bangladesh, Pakistan. If you look at the trajectories, Thailand is the most protrusive because it went from seemingly democratic consolidation path to military coup. The reversal was very sharp and intense and severe. So it's a case that uh, defies a lot of this literature about military withdrawals, democratization, modernization theory. Uh, very interesting. Now, if you look at the frequency, we had the last successful coup was 2006. Prior to 2006 successful coup was 1991, in February 1991. Prior to that was 1976. So 15 years apart, successful 76, 91. 15 years apart, successful 91 to 2006. In the 70s and 80s, there were a number of unsuccessful coups. There was an unsuccessful coup, a major unsuccessful coup in April 1981. Three days in April. And that should have been successful. Of, of the formula and recipe for coup making, they had everything uh, in line. The, the key battalions, uh, the, the control of communications, and this and that, but it failed. So we have to look uh, at the reasons for failure. Uh, but now I think that uh, in our case, the frequency will go down. Uh, maybe we'll have one more left, two more perhaps, but we don't think that uh, Thailand will have a coup every 4.5 years again. But the, uh, the manifestations of interventionism uh, by other means is very interesting. And uh, here, in other countries, you know, they have different ways of uh, intervening. Uh, but here, I think we see it in the news every day, this uh, contest uh, battle to amend the Constitution, for example. So some would say that the Constitution was uh, uh, implanted by military interventionism, uh, and that uh, the civilians are trying to 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 amend. Uh, the other couple of us sources that you didn't go into as variables. One is the level of interna internationalization. I think that has been very important for Thailand. Right? The diplomats, the, the investors, the NGOs, uh, the level of openness. The more open the country, the more difficult it becomes, it seemingly, it seems to me, um, to have military coup. I think that the, the military, uh, and we know uh, from, from a couple of studies, that in late 2006, in 2007, the Council for National Security, our coup makers, wanted to have another coup. And uh, I know personally that uh, they wanted to have another coup. But they, they refrained. Uh, and the reason is because they were afraid of the international repercussions, what investors would do, what would happen to the stock market, what uh, the, the international community, the ambassadors and diplomats and so on, how they would be shunned. Uh, even during the coup period, they could not see top leaders of other countries. So I think this is a one variable that, that is that, uh, uh, it's instructive. Uh, this is a comprehensive, you know, uh, wide-ranging study. I think it's, it's, going to, it's going to be a great book. It will be cited uh, widely. Uh, and I look forward to the, the reviews and uh, uh, to reading it myself. Now, let's go straight to the uh, our discussions. We have uh, someone who straddles just the right different camps and terrains to uh, provide us with some practical insights about democratic control, 
vis-à-vis uh, -vis military. Uh, Dr. Panitan Watanayagon uh, is a professor here at the Chuan Kong University, uh, Department of International Relations, but he also spent uh, the December, I think it was December 2008 to, to May 2011 as the government spokesman and the Deputy Secretary General to the Prime Minister to visit Wei Chang Shiwa, uh, crucially in the dark, contested, controversial days of uh, April 2010, uh, April 2009 and again uh, April and May, especially, especially April and May 2010. The Apisit uh, government uh, resided at a military installation, military site, and Dr. Panitan was, was there. So I think that he has a very intimate, intimate view uh, that could give us uh, practical insights and uh, can speak to the theoretical presentation that we have heard. So please, uh, John Panitan, the floor is yours. <laughs> Uh, uh, Professor Croissant, uh, well, one of the easy ways to answer your questions about my days in the military is that I don't remember those days anymore. It's just been a long time. Uh, that's an easy answer in Thailand. Uh, but uh, uh, seriously, uh, uh, I have served uh, at least four prime ministers uh, since 1980. And um, one of the issues that uh, I am particularly interest, interested uh, is uh, the issue of civilian control and I'm very glad that uh, Professor Bozong uh, began this book uh, in November uh, 2008 but I remember our discussions uh, years before that and, and in fact uh, issues of uh, civilian control uh, uh, is one of the fundamental issues uh, in democratization in many countries. I remember when I when I began my my, my studies uh, on military issues uh, in 1980s, uh, reading Huntington's and and and, and others. Uh, uh, civilian control is one of the very problematic, uh, uh, less studied until these days. Until these days, uh, uh, although more have been done on Latin American countries, uh, but less and less so uh, these days. Uh, uh, maybe uh, simply because uh, the military is no longer prominent in in most countries. But 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 then again, countries like Thailand and and a few others, uh, we still coping with that issue. So uh, my 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 first point, uh, I have about six points. Uh, my first point is uh, this is a very good attempt. Uh, to systematically capture and measure uh, uh, the civilian control uh, in a uh, qualitative and quantitative way. Uh, I think this is a very, very uh, unique uh, attempt that I have seen in the past few years. This is the only one of its kind uh, uh, these days. I, I hope it will be more. So, so I suggest you to buy, to buy the book. Uh, uh, it's uh, almost 300 pages and, and uh, it uh, covers seven countries. I am only uh, unhappy about the cover of Thailand, which is only 19 pages. You know, you should do more. You should do a book on Thailand, uh, maybe. Uh, so this is my, my, my first point. But more interestingly, my second point, the, uh, the, the theme of Professor Po Song in systematically trying to create a metric it's, 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 it's very intriguing, and, and I'm struck by the what I call the three-dimensional uh, metrics uh, uh, with the three level of analysis. Uh, three-dimensional in the sense that one uh, he tried to capture the uh, uh, creating the factors of, or the metrics of uh, what is the uh, democratic society is, you know, civil liberty, political right, uh, accountability, power to govern. I think that is not. Uh, so much debatable, I think more acceptable. Uh, that's one dimension. But the other uh, two dimensions on civilian control is very interesting. He tried to divide those uh, uh, factors or key performance indexes into uh, internal security, uh, public policy, national defense, and military organization. And within those four uh, key performance indicators, he also divided uh, uh, into the high level of, con of control, medium level of control, and low level of control. I think this is a very good framework for many, many 
analysts or students of military politics to to uh, use it and operate, operationalize it in a much more detail and creating a much more understanding in terms of the civilian control. Uh, I, I would imagine that books uh, that uh, utilize this kind of uh, analytical tool in certain countries in certain details uh, would shed some more light on what's going on and would eliminate some of the errors that occurred in some of the uh, some of the um, uh, areas uh, for example in, in in Thailand which I'll touch on that uh, later uh, I, I think that, but uh, my second point is that this is one very good analytical tool that I have seen in years and, and I think we should take this uh, as a, uh, a contribution, major contribution to the book, uh, from the book, you know, to, to our understanding. Uh, but number three, when applying, uh, my, number, my, my, my third point, when applying uh, on certain cases, uh, particularly uh, on Thailand, it is very difficult, difficult to, uh, uh, to use these uh, uh, factors or or the two, if you are not paying attention to to a, a lot of uh, detailed factors. For example, uh, uh, in Thailand, the predominant threat is internal. It's internal. This is why the military uh, was giving a role to play, you know, in uh, domestic politics. And this is, of course, not new to many developing countries. The major threat is not from external; it's from internal, and particularly. Uh, in terms of a uh, uh, conflict between the elites, uh, uh, political conflicts, uh, this is uh, very much captured in many studies uh, since 1932. Uh, in other words, uh, it's not the democratization uh, uh, that is in trouble. The elite is in trouble uh, in, in many countries in Thailand. They are uh, fighting over uh, the control. Uh, uh, in our case, the elites happen to be the military, the monarchy, the bureaucracy. Uh, and these are the three uh, major you know, uh, groups uh, in the past, and now you have the politicians, and you have uh, business, uh, and now you have uh, NGOs. Uh, these are up and coming uh, leaders that are still in conflict. Uh, in that sense, threats or the uh, handling of the threats are uh, reflecting um, in the military uh, duties, in the military uh, activities. So this book doesn't really capture that. Uh, that it, uh, it tried about half a page, uh, but uh, uh, little could appreciate more uh, on how uh, internal, internal security play a much more dominant role in, in keeping the military the rise uh, and, and control over the civilian uh, until the civilian can handle the threat uh, among themselves well. Then I think the role of the military may be uh, less and less important. Um, that's one example. Uh, the other examples are uh, um, issues like budget, control over the budget. Uh, this is, uh, but, but I like the way you divided the military-civilian relations you know, into three periods. I think that will make it easier uh, for people to follow, I think. Uh, but in general, uh, when, we, when you apply those metrics, uh, for example, in the budget uh, uh, area, um, the problem is how significant is it? Uh, the budget, I think uh, uh, Kuntur and said, may be hidden in many other areas. The, over the years, the military budget has not increased dramatically. Uh, ratio to the GDP is only 1.5%. Uh, you don't detect that uh, in the form of structure. Uh, more to the point, when you look deeper into the structure, you see a lot of budget uh, expenditure spent on personnel, almost 70% on personnel. So you don't see that kind of uh, um, uh, chief very much, although from time to time after the coup or before the coup, you can detect slightly increase, but more or less spend on the uh, catching up with the uh, inflation, ca catching up with the compensation in terms of the uh, uh, personnel uh, uh, um, um, activities, and, and that's one. Uh, there are also other factors that are not easy to capture and sometimes contributed to uh, the difficulty in, in measuring the control. For example, the domestic violence uh, in, 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 in Thai politics from time to time uh, require the military to, to step in. You need to ask the question, uh, can the police handle uh, a massive domestic violence? Uh, if the police cannot handle, who will handle that? 
uh, that, that is another problem uh, when when you think of the control the civilian uh, authority tend to uh, lend the military uh, more role in certain crises uh, because the police simply are not able to operate imagine if the police can effectively control the situation uh, in in domestic politics and imagine if the border patrol police in the future can control the activities on borders what will be the role of the military in thailand increasingly the border patrol police have become more effective there will be more studies uh, on that uh, uh, coming out soon uh, within the, the next uh, month or two by desmond ball uh, a, a professor from australia he uh, studied the role of the border patrol police uh, in the last uh, almost 10 years very inter interesting but anyway i'll come back to that later and more uh, and from time to time factors like the south the violence in the south uh, you ask who will be effectively managing the peace and security in the south although the military is not perfect but what is an alternative and then you you look at, into the non-traditional structure non-traditional factor non, non the tra traditional threats security requirements in ASEAN uh, these days more and more military uh, personnel are uh, brought into the uh, handling of the non-traditional threats who will be handling that so these are the factors that are uh, making or sustaining the role of the military or the influence of the military in the many different ways, sometimes not relating to democratic or not, uh, in terms of democratization. But uh, these are the factors that you need to be accounted. Then again, the last uh, complicating factor, for example, rise of China, uh, return of the US, uh, rise of Japan you know, uh, in Asia, uh, not discussed in this book, but these are the roles or these are the factors that are contributing to the sustainable uh, in terms of military influence and military capability. Um, how to control this uh, is, is going to be a, a problem. Uh, but then again, um, um, uh, issues like the uh, Constitutional 1997, I think, did a very good, uh, uh, it is a very good attempt to control the military. Uh, the military are not able to uh, to serve dual function, uh, and that's very clear. And from time to time, uh, rise of civilian uh, uh, popular uh, uh, leaders like Thaksin, or even this day, the, the, the masses politics from time to time can serve as a control uh, to the military uh, role in politics. But in the end, uh, I think I, I tend to agree that uh, um, it is a problem within the military not able to shift and change its functions uh, to a more suitable role uh, in, in, inside the military organization may serve more of the problem uh, to the country rather than other outside factors. Uh, so uh, uh, these, are, these are the problems that uh, need to be captured much more in detail. Uh, interestingly also, another interesting point uh, uh, in, in, my, in my third point when applying this factors. Uh, when you look at the policy making function, the NSC is interestingly, National Security Council is increasingly uh, exerting its role over the military uh, uh, influence. For example, uh, I'm sure you heard about the recent negotiation in the South. It's not started with the military. It is the NSC, it is the, uh, it is the government. In fact, it began during Chuan administration when he instructed the NSC to uh, declassify the defense uh, policy, to declassify you know, the uh, uh, national security policy, and to begin to draft a national security policy for the southern Thailand, and began to push for the military to accept more role in the civilian planning, civilian policy making. Uh, and, and that role slowly continued. Uh, and the military more and more are now adopting civilian uh, initiated policies. Um, the uh, Internal Security Operations Command Center is another interesting uh, uh, point. I disagree with Professor Kuo-Song that there is no uh, 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 agency that the military and the civilian uh, can, can, uh, can, can join, civilian military joint uh, 
uh, organization. I think the ISOC could be that one. Uh, it just happened that it, it, it used a different name. Uh, this is not a new, this is not an old ISOC. This is a new ISOC placed under the control of the prime minister. And everything has to be approved by the cabinet. Uh, uh, operation at ISOC using the ISA, using the emergency decree, uh, has to be approved by the cabinet, elected government. And here, the major error uh, happened. The military cannot arrest uh, uh, civilians uh, uh, under ISOC, under ISA, under emergency decree. It has to be uh, assisting the police uh, to, uh, to arrest the, the civilian under those circumstances. Only in the martial law, martial law area that the military can arrest and prosecute uh, civilians. Not anymore since 1997, the military can operate independently. The military cannot even grant amnesty to the southern uh, militants um, without the approval of the court. That is according to the new ISOC law or the new ISA. Uh, I think these are the details that less studied uh, in the last few years. Uh, a bit confusing that you have many, many uh, different uh, security internal security laws, you know, emergency decree is also divided into two levels, you know, normal uh, emergency and extreme condition. Uh, it requires different procedures uh, and and all of this under a piece of administration, uh, you see the attempt to uh, to conceptualize it and to unify it, to use it under the ISOC, the uh, martial law, the two types of the emergency decree and the, uh, the internal security act were Collapse uh, in one in one in one type of you know operation under the, the ISOC, which is uh, prime minister has to chair it, the cabinet has to approve it, and more importantly, uh, operations under ISOC must be report must, must be report to the parliament. The parliament has to open the debate on the operations of ISOC, and which in turn will uh, have consequences in terms of the budget and the parliamentary oversight in the next few years. Uh, uh, and these are the new changes that uh, did not capture in the book. Uh, I need to tell uh, Paul Chamber to pay more attention on these details. But, but in essentially, um, uh, it's confusing uh, to many people, even to me, uh, also uh, at first, uh, because these are the uh, new changes, uh, uh, more or less happened during Thaksin years, more or less happened during the coup d'etat years, uh, and, 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 and we, um, we, we, we don't have many good studies to capture what's going on in this uh, implementation of this law. What I'm trying to say uh, in, 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 in this, uh, in this uh, uh, issue, on this issue of in applying these factors, sometimes uh, new changes, sometimes details in terms of uh, uh, implementation of certain security laws, it's always complicated, our uh, analysis and our conclusion. Uh, there are changes uh, uh, on the ground, there are changes uh, within the civilian control that give the civilian more uh, control, although not enormous control, but you can see a improving of the control of the civilian uh, in this area. Uh, enough or not, you know, uh, that's another uh, issue to, to debate. Um, but uh, uh, these are the examples uh, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, I think um, uh, uh, very, the book did a very good uh, job in creating more debates on, on, on how we can accurately uh, measure the civilian control uh, using these uh, factors, using these uh, uh, areas, you know, policy implementation, uh, policy making, uh, recruitment, uh, and, and all of these. Uh, uh, this is my third point. Yeah. My fourth point, uh, um, I think, um, I think uh, Professor Kosong uh, uh, began to touch on that uh, uh, in his conclusion. But I think, in order to move forward, increase the civilian control. Uh, yes, you are. I think common sense uh, uh, tell you that uh, increase uh, participation of the civil society should be good. Uh, yes, increasing the institution uh, capacity uh, should be good. Yes, increasing uh, uh, parliamentary oversight should be good. But it will take time. It will take time. And uh, you, you see many problems uh, in building the institution, building the uh, uh, understanding, building the uh, civilian capacity, building the civil society you know, uh, to serve as check and balance. Even in a democratic country, building a knowledge on defense among the public 
has not always been successful or effective. Looking, looking at the case of Iraq, uh, Middle East, uh, 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 wars against uh, terrorism, for example, it's not always easy to build up you know, understanding. But what can be effective in Thailand, uh, in my mind, and I, I'm, 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 uh, I think uh, the next book could touch on that more, is the role of the leadership, civilian leadership, in trying to, at a certain point, push for more control. Prime Minister Anand Bayarachun, when installed by the uh, military government, began to punish some of the generals for the first time uh, in the role of wrongdoing, in the coup making, in terms of using violence. I, I think, to the surprise of the military, uh, the civilian prime minister appointed by the military themselves began to bring them to court. I think that is what we need uh, from time to time. The role of the leadership in pushing civilian control is less studied. Prime Minister Chuan Lee Pai came to power. The second civilian minister of defense uh, since 1975, the first civilian defense minister, uh, Prime Minister Seni Pramo, stayed for one month. But Chuan Lee Pai began to reduce effectively uh, the uh, force structure almost 100,000 positions, 82,000 positions you know, in the master plan, and began to curve down you know, the military purse, refused uh, to increase the budget, uh, and also began to send the military to East Timor. Uh, I was there at the defense, uh, uh, head of the defense working group. Uh, I know that the decision came from the civilian leader, not from the military. The military is less prepared uh, to take that role uh, with the help of our friends from the region, Australia, the US. Uh, civilian leader was able to make that, to push the military to be more professional. They were very surprised that we sent them to East Timor. And in the end, Major Bun Sang will tell you that he was very pleased with that decision. It will not happen if you don't have that civilian minister pushing. He also uh, uh, began to step into uh, uh, making um, uh, many critical uh, 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 policies, for example, to refuse the U.S. offer to have a pre-positioning ship uh, 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 weapon stockpiles you know, in the Gulf of Thailand. Uh, Chuan administration uh, outright refused that and, and, and said this is not for Thailand anymore uh, to harbor the U.S. bases. Uh, the military tend to agree with accepting the U.S. assistance and U.S. role and wanting the U.S. to return. Of course, they benefit enormously. But it was Chuan who said no. And, uh, and of course, you know, the, uh, you, uh, you know the outcome of that. Democrat is not well liked by the military in general. But from time to time, they cooperate. So these are the roles um, um, of, of, of the civilian uh, uh, defense uh, uh, leaders or leadership. On the contrary, Thaksin, I think captured very well in this book, and by Duncan McCarco and by Ukrit. Uh, politicization, polarization, or uh, intervention of the civilian uh, leadership in the military always cause trouble. And this is not only Thaksin. Cha Chai Junhawan, ex military officer, became prime minister, did the same thing to the military. You know, politicizing the military, uh, pushing one class against another class, uh, 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 and promoting certain uh, groups of officers that are close to them. I don't need to go into detail because Duncan did a good job, and others did a good job in explaining, uh, he did a good job in explaining in the book uh, how uh, destructive the civilian government can be to the democratization in using the military to really create big impact in the democratization process done by the elected Prime Minister Thaksin himself. See? So uh, I think these factors are complicated to understand, uh, but, um, but then again, same thing happened to Apisit, of course, uh, came into power, uh, two governments, after two elected governments, Samak and Somchai, but complicated by domestic problems and, and also the military at that time, by that time, already trying to rebalance its power by changing certain rules, certain regulations. Um, but then again, you know, uh, 
not to the full extent like in the past. The creation of the ISOC is not the same anymore. It is placed not under the military control, but under the Prime Minister Office, for example. So you see the attempt to rebalancing that uh, act uh, by the APC government. It is the first government who trying to uh, systematically initiate that, that the uh, Internal Security Act adopted during tax administration. Uh, created, uh, uh, create, uh, sorry, created during tax administration, but adopted under Suryut administration, uh, required by law anyway, uh, um, by 1997 constitution to change the structure. The ISA and the uh, new defense legislation is required by 1997 constitution. Yeah. I'm sometimes surprised when they say the ISA is not democratic. Uh, the uh, defense legislation is not democratic. But 1997 constitution required these two laws uh, to be adopted. Uh, it's less known uh, among uh, analysts. Uh, so these are the issues that need to be brought up and debated uh, uh, more and more. But uh, I it was trying for the first time uh, to line up the ISA, the emergency decree, the martial law together within a newly created but old name, the ISOC. I remember uh, rejected the idea of recreating ISOC to Prime Minister Suryut and saying that he will mislead the country, he will mislead the international community, thinking that the ISOC will return. No, it's not returning. It is in fact created during tax administration, but adopted during Suryut. This is a new uh, version of Thailand homeland security. But then again, you need to ask a question, what the capability that you will have when you're creating a new civilian military uh, institution that handling the new traditional security threat in Thailand? Uh, are you going to depend on the police? Are you going to depend on the civilian? Yes, in the future. Yes, there's a plan to push for the police to handle more uh, of the uh, international terrorist activities. Yes, it will, be, uh, uh, it will be in the future that the police will be more and more capable of handling domestic violence. It's in the plan. But in the meantime, what would you do? You would like to transfer some of the military capabilities into the ISOC, controlled by the cabinet, reported to the parliament. You see, And that's the plan. But the use of the name is misleading. The coup also derail some of this uh, plan, which already began by 1997 constitution. 1997 constitution required the anti-communist law uh, to be abolished and to recreate a new organization to handle our internal security threats. See, and, and I think these are the uh, legacy that Abhisit uh, uh, inherited and, and went into the administration and went deep into trouble with the red shirt, with the taxin pro, you know, uh, 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 activity groups, uh, and then, and uh, it, it uh, prevents us to see what's going on in the civilian control during that time. Uh, so the role of the uh, leadership uh, need to be studied uh, much more. Uh, that's my uh, uh, fourth point. My fifth point. Uh, interestingly, uh, in in many other countries, uh, uh, at the United Nations, uh, uh, there are studies. There are studies. Uh, civilian uh, uh, security sector reform, for example, uh, is, is is studied uh, very very well under the United Nations umbrella. And, and recently, uh, the Ajahn uh, Kanit's uh, Nanakorn uh, Commission uh, on Truth and Reconciliation began to adopt a security sector reform agenda and try to push it. But I think the security sector reform uh, um, models uh, in 1980s uh, and 1970s and 80s were aimed to those uh, newly independent countries in African uh, continent or in Latin American countries. Uh, uh, it's not suitable uh, for, for countries like Thailand, which is on the way uh, of democratization and, and more developed uh, in, in that sense. So, uh, but Recently, in 1990s and 2000s, you see a new project uh, in England, uh, the MDD project, Managing Defense in the, in the Democracy Project in, in Cranfield uh, and in many uh, universities in, in, the, in the UK. Interestingly, they began to develop uh, indicators like Professor Kursong uh, uh, did. Um, and more importantly, more importantly, it's more suitable for countries like Thailand in the sense that they divided the indicators into three groups. 
One is policy making. Policy making. And they said countries like Thailand and other, they have less problem in civilian creating policy for the government to adopt, uh, for the military to adopt, you know, for the security agency to adopt and, 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 and follow. But the problem began not at the policy making uh, for these countries. Uh, the problem began when, uh, when you try to implement the policy. Uh, very well, this point is very well mentioned by, uh, by, by Professor Kuo Song. Um, uh, in implementing uh, this policy initiated by, by the civilian control, oversight, evaluation, is always problematic. It's problematic at the parliament, at the, uh, at the, uh, at the committees, uh, military committees, both in the Senate and in the uh, House of Representatives, in trying to push uh, this implementation uh, effectively. In other words, we have problems with our MPs in trying to control the military, uh, and they are less effective. But interestingly, these projects in the UK uh, mention uh, that the most problematic is not with civilian either, it's within the military or different establishment in many key areas, in personnel management, in strategic management, in information management, in finance, in acquisition, in performances, they found out that these establishment, different establishments are all aging, conservative. They don't have balanced scorecard, they don't have good key performance indexes in managing their uh, money, in managing their promotion. They tend to rely on old Cold War mentality uh, and old uh, types of management, very old. You know, uh, it's a problem within the establishment itself uh, that allow them uh, uh, to uh, be very much entrenched, uh, resist change, you know, and, and uh, Kun Siranan can tell us much more on is this true or not, you know, in your own you know, organization. Uh, uh, but, um, but these are to, to change that, it's not to change the civilian capability, but to push the military to change from within by effective leadership at the top. Uh, this is what the conclusion by some of the study, which is very interesting uh, uh, to me. Uh, so, uh, and, and my, my last point, uh, the sixth uh, point, uh, it's that uh, I, I, I disagree, uh, I mentioned already that uh, there is a joint civilian and military organization in Thailand already. Uh, and, and we need to look into into that much more. Uh, uh, I saw budgeting is very interesting. Uh, uh, it's in, uh, incorporating many uh, ma many activities you know, outside the uh, different establishment. Uh, the uh, uh, intelligence is also very interesting uh, in in terms of um, uh, how they're handling that. Uh, these days, uh, people are connected uh, with with uh, with internet. Uh, the the information outside of the different establishment tend to flow much faster. Uh, you can you can manage that, uh, uh, but for the uh, agreement not to seek or to seek support from the military, well, I, I think it changes over time. Uh, the Democrats were surprising that one day they uh, they 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 are opposed the uh, the, the military establishment. On the other day, they try to incorporate them uh, into the governance. So, so it depending on circumstances, but um, I think that's the reflection of the internal politics. In the end, I think. Civilian control could happen, can happen, and is happening in Thailand, but it's quite slowly. But the emphasis uh, to me is internal uh, organization could be more effective. Uh, leadership at the top could be more effective. Uh, as I uh, mentioned, um, for the long future, uh, to be effective, I think we need to reconsider how we can manage border issues. Thailand is a land-based threat country. The military are very concerned we have a long borders, 2,000 uh, kilometers. You need to have the answer for the military. If you don't allow them to manage border, uh, border problems, what you need? You know, answers, uh, according to Pro Professor Bo, is you need to bring the border patrol police you know, and substitute for the military, free the military for, from these activities. And that will be a major breakthrough. Right? As you see, it's already happening. The most effective units on the ground, on borders, is not the military. It's the police, it's the border patrol police, trained like the military, effectively managing like the military. Less, uh, 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 more able, uh, more capable, but much more smaller. Uh, once you do that, 
Then you move into the managing of the domestic threats, non-traditional issues. Then you need to redevelop ISOC, change it. If you have more budget, more push, you can push it to be uh, a mini homeland. You know, but uh, then again, the homeland security uh, uh, may brought some bad you know, uh, connotation for many countries. But you need a new organization that civilian and military can jointly working under the prime minister leadership, you know, under the parliamentary system uh, in Thailand. So you can free up the military to do the last activity, that is to defend our territories. That is to build up the military in a much more professional way, uh, to be able to absorb the increasing uh, rise of China, the return of, of the U.S., uh, the increasing rise of Japan, exertive of Japan you know, in, in Asia. The Thai military needs to be moving, and of course, uh, some of the progressive uh, elements in the military is already moving toward that way, see, slowly, uh, because they are not able to free themselves up from borders, from internal security issues yet. But these are the blueprint already in place since 1997. I'm very surprised that many analysts don't pick it up, pick it up and discuss it. But I'm glad that Professor Ko Song did. And I think this book in the end, in summary, did a very good service you know, for Thailand and many uh, other countries, including those six countries. Uh, I hope that next time you pay more attention to Thailand and give us more than eight, 18 or 19 pages. And I think we can debate much more uh, next time when you come around uh, to Thailand. Thank you. Thank you, Ajahn um, Banitan. Very rich feedback and reflection on, on the book uh, and also on other issues uh, of Thai military and, and democracy. Uh, the book that was mentioned, Desmond Ball's study of the Border Patrol Police, will be published by White Lotus. I know the White Lotus publisher is here with us. So it will be in the next couple of months really worth it. It's a big study. I don't know how many pages it will come out to, but uh, it's really worth uh, reading. Now, John Benitan brought up a couple of issues I want to um, highlight. Uh, first, in the late 1990s, Thailand went through a series of military reforms, uh, very much in line with security sector reform, and uh, we had the civilian leadership with a progressive military leadership under General Suryut. Now, after the coup, since the coup, before the coup, 2000 to 2006, fierce contestation. Uh, Thaksin tried to politicize it, the military brought, brought his cousin to be the army chief and so on. Um, and after the coup, however, uh, some of the reforms that we saw in the late 1990s have been reversed. And the military now is uh, uh, been seen as a bit uh, dodgy, you know, there's a bomb detector, remember the GT-200 that doesn't work, there's a military kind of airship that doesn't work, and a lot of uh, accusations of corruption and graft in the military. Uh, so, the late 1990s, that whole period of ostensible, ostensible democratic consolidation is, is gone now. That's why the Thai case really stands out. Another thing he, uh, John Braintown brought up is monarchy. Now, I have to stir the pot. It's my job. Uh, uh, the presentation by, by our author, uh, Dr. Kwa Song, did not make mention of the monarchy at all. Not a word. And um, uh, it's partly because it doesn't fit the other cases. The other six cases don't have uh, to, to address this. But in Thailand, this uh, sim symbiosis between the military monarchy um, cannot be uh, left unaddressed. And we'll come to this, uh, I think, in the discussion a little bit. Uh, let me proceed to Colonel Tiranan Nantakwang. He has a doctorate. Uh, in operations research from Florida Institute of Technology, and we know around here that he is uh, really kind of an academic, uh, dressed up in a military garb, and he has an academic mind. He likes to do studies and so on. He's based at the Strategic Studies Center uh, with the uh, National Defense Studies Institute. So he has a short PowerPoint for us. Uh, Colonel Tiernan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Tiernan, and uh, Dr. Kuo Song, Dr. Bei Tan. Uh, Good morning, uh, Excellency and Distinguished. I, first, I would like to thank you to uh, for uh, ISIS and uh, ABS who uh, asked me to join uh, this session. Uh, it seems to me like I am a dependent 
about the issue about the military because the topic is uh, I'm a bad guy and I try to obstruct the uh, democracy in Thailand. It's, it's still a big bad giant is uh, try to obstruct. But anyway, uh, I try to uh, uh, to describe because I don't have a salary, I don't have the book, and uh, which is that is uh, maybe uh, I'm not read it yet. I listened to Dr. Croissant and I mentioned something maybe um, I'd like to show my my work which is that uh, I, I heard that Dr. Croissant uh, stopped the research on uh, 2010 but uh, I I have uh, been, uh, written an article in uh, 2011 which is maybe a continuing part that maybe uh, fulfill some detail uh, the problem yeah, people uh, on the panel uh, talk about uh, this keyword I think uh, maybe uh, group data, democracy, SSR, and SG, and also uh, military professionalism, which is uh, Dr. Kuo-Song mentioned that it may be uh, not a good index or good tool to uh, talk about the democratic control of the military. But why, why is group data? Here is facts. The fact I borrowed the, the, this picture is not I didn't buy myself. It's uh, borrowed from uh, Wiki. Uh, Wikipedia, not Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia is uh, some people uh, uh, do the article about the uh, uh, coup being in Thailand uh, related to a uh, constitution. Uh, the red area is uh, the changing uh, constitution in Thailand from uh, 1932. Is uh, the red area is from uh, the result of the the coup data. And the yellow one is uh, they have uh, some uh, Senate or Parliament that have an uh, appointment uh, to be a uh, registrator. And also the, the green one is uh, come from only uh, uh, election. And if you see that, you can see that the period, uh, maybe uh, I don't have uh, control of the mouse. The red area is that uh, you can uh, count. Is, uh, some people said, okay, successful for the coup data is around 10 or 12 or 11. It depends on the people uh, think about that. And uh, the, the yellow one is uh, quite a lot. And also the green one, just three that, uh, you know, changing in the constitution. This is a fact in Thailand also. The data that why people are concerned about the big bad giant in the country. And also the role and responsibility for the military is uh, written in, uh, you know, our constitution right now uh, in uh, 2007, uh, part two and uh, section 77. You can read the sentence. But the last one is uh, develop the country which is that add on uh, the, the, the job or role of, of the military right now that we have to do maybe uh, four things. First is uh, defend the country, which is the first picture. Second, uh, defend the king, protect the king. And third one, develop the country, which is in the past during the Cold War period that uh, we fight with the communist thing and uh, the, the, uh, Thailand developed a total warfare uh, doctrine, which is its work and uh, try to uh, make uh, uh, people have more uh, like, uh, quality of life. And, and the, the fourth picture is a supporting role in the crisis of the country, which is that uh, national disaster or maybe a earthquake or anything that uh, happened that uh, military have to do in a supporting role, not a major role. This is a role and responsibility for the armed force this uh, decade. Related to something, uh, people, uh, many people uh, mention about the many things, but I try to uh, show my analysis that uh, during the Cold War period, we have a problem, a threat, we call a traditional threat, which is that uh, each state uh, fight each other. Uh, maybe we have a war, but the school of thought that try to maintain the concept is uh, national security and also the mechanism I use the security sector which is the military, police, uh, national security, national intelligence agency, uh, blah 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 use the security sector to solve the problem. After the end of the Cold War, uh, we start maybe uh, uh, Berlin Wall of Berlin in uh, 1989 and also uh, breaking of the Soviet Union on the 1990. We have uh, something new that we call a non-traditional threat. We have a problem about the national disaster, we have a problem about drug and narcotic, a pandemic, uh, many things that, but we still use uh, national security 
concept or idea a school of thought to uh, roll the security issue and also use the skill sector. This this has happened in Thailand in 2010. Uh, we deployed the army, uh, armed forces to uh, solve the crisis, which is that after the finish, some people said, oh, don't like the, the uh, uh, armed forces, do the bad thing, kill civilians. But the next year, uh, 2011, uh, armed forces have been deployed again in the crisis, in the front, during the front. After finish the job, the people said, oh, uh, we love army, we love armed forces. The problem is it seems like the uh, security sector and uh, secu national security is not matched to the non-traditional threat. Therefore, its prospect is supposed to be, uh, if we deal with a non-traditional threat, it's supposed to be a human security. And also use the civil society to solve the problem. Uh, we we ha have uh, many examples, let's say the front time, and uh, right now it's not arm army that you know go to first to help the people. The civil society they go first before armed forces. However, uh, military is still have a job to defend the country. Is they have to uh, right now uh, they have a concept about the com uh, comprehensive security, which is that uh, try to uh, balance or something. Easy way to understand that uh, in the past during the Cold War period, uh, military concern only the yellow cycle, circle. Yellow circle is only national thing. They don't care about much. Uh, we send the troop and uh, die or whatever. They don't care much. They don't care about the world. However. Uh, this decade is difficult to do that. We have to concern about the green circle and blue circle at the same time. But we don't. We have a limited of a resource. We cannot uh, take the whole thing. We for the military that concern only the intersection, uh, intersect or maybe an uh, overlap area for the uh, yellow circle, and that we have to care about the green and we have to care about the blue one. For the Thailand, I have analysis that during the past we call a black box because we have a lot of concept about the covert operation. We have a lot of uh, something that uh, need to know basis. Is it can be that people who have uh, armed uh, weapon can do anything? Let's say that uh, many uh, major powers saw the same thing in the past. You know, when I was young, I'm working on a special operation force. Uh, my commander said, okay, meet me there. Just m how many men were born and we call. I, I have no question. I just, okay, see you there, sir. Because uh, we, we have a job to do. But today, I think if you do something like that, you order that, they're going to have a question. Where, what, what the mission, sir? What, uh, what did you need, need me to do, sir? Something like that. During the crisis on the 2010 and 2011, uh, I think uh, we should uh, we, we change that we have the new law, special law that to handle the crisis. Let's say that uh, emergency decree and also the security act. It's been that uh, before we deploy the military, we have to uh, uh, present the plan, show the plan what is that we are going to do and approve by civilian. Uh, I think this time is uh, is maybe a uh, civilian control right now by the law, but for the future is more 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 in uh, audit, more in control, more in admin, more in uh, governance. Uh, many things there, but this is a, a, a transition period. I have did an analysis also for the Thai society is stability. Uh, we worry about the cool thing, and uh, I'm have a three, three major power in a Thai society that may be a check in the, the society. First is an interest group, uh, the second one is politician, and third one is the military leader groups, not a whole army, whole armed forces, just only the leader that may be uh, more politicized. And uh, if they have a proper distance, is the society going to be a stability. But uh, some group, if maybe close, it literally, literally close to uh, interest group, maybe a mafia state, and uh, in some cases, a uh, political group and <coughs> and interest group close together and cut off the military is going to lead to the coup data. And uh, military state is a uh, political groups and uh, military groups in, uh, have a close relation and uh, uh, separate for the interest group.
And the, the worst thing is uh, Monopoly, which is a uh, uh, three group is work together and enjoy together. My 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 purpose is uh, I think is a. Uh, the way to uh, stabilize the power group in Thailand uh, is maybe uh, you have to have the uh, support for the civil society to make more uh, strong and uh, do, do more audit. Let's say that Dr. Tinan mentioned about the GT200, the uh, bomb detector and also the balloon or something that at work right now. Uh, that the issue that lead to uh, before we uh, order the bomb detector, we have to uh, ask the academic scholar to join the committee and approve equipment before we uh, order it. And that's uh, media. Media is as a tool. It's very important because uh, uh, right now, as you can see, that uh, people, uh, policemen, gonna keep a ticket. The people have to try to uh, catch up. The, what are they doing? The corruption. They ask for the money. It's the same thing. You can see the clip in Thailand that when uh, police are waving and stop the car, uh, people, the driver gonna use a cell phone to uh, you know uh, make a clip to make sure that uh, they not harm by policemen. And also the same thing, police are going to use the cell phone to uh, use it as uh, evidence. It's the same thing. Right now, I think uh, tools is very important. Tools is uh, media is very important. And if we support uh, civil society uh, that uh, allow them to make a strong and they're going to audit the distance between uh, if uh, they got a report that okay today a big spot of uh, armed forces uh, have a dinner with uh, some political guy blah 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 it's gonna have a report to the society it's, it's not easy to do the coup for the future conclusion uh, I try to say that if you like armed force Thai arm, especially for the Thai Armed Force to change. It can be uh, three ways. First, uh, naturally, uh, which is that it's a take long time. It's a, we're going to change only the, to survive. We don't have budget. We don't have anything. We have to survive. We're we going to change uh, the, the armed forces. The blue one, transition change, which is that we have to planning, but it's involved in the internal factor and external factors, which is that uh, not only the armed forces, they, Everyone say that why army armed force change yourself? It's it's difficult because uh, you know some people uh, may maybe uh, have a benefit or interest in that or but you have to have strong and outside that uh, try to uh, change them also. But in Thailand, have have a birth case in the red area is a radical change. In the past, if we uh, defeat the war, let's say the uh, Japan and Germany defeat the war, and uh, we have to restructure, reform, and defeat the people. Uh, Thailand have a problem in the past during 1990, uh, 1972 and 1992, and I think and the last one is the defeat to politics and can be changed in a you know radical change the conclusion also that i think if we talk about the coup in thailand i have a you know i have to answer phone every day that okay colonel do, the, do we gonna have a coup today just just a couple days ago i said oh yeah if you ask me i said tomorrow it's a good day to do the coup because uh, everyone have a rumor in about the society, they worry. I'm not sure that sometimes uh, the rumor is a make the, the, the society is shaken. Because uh, you know, I have to uh, pick up my wife in the you know uh, ending of the day, and I pass the second uh, cavalry division. Uh, the private still uh, play the football in the football field. What uh, they, we I have to answer many times, and today uh, they have a new things. Uh, some friends said. They have an assassination plan, not a cool thing. Yeah, they have a lot of rumor every day. I think uh, society uh, supposed to know that maybe uh, they use uh, rumor a lot, and uh, people uh, reason for the rumor. They believe, oh, it's a real one, it's a narrative, it's a blah blah blah, blah and then they fade it. Uh, this is a form of inside out for the military guy. I say that a big bad giant to obstruct the democracy. But I would like to say that. It's transition period. It's take time. If uh, they don't change, they not allow me to be join this session. And I'm not represent from the armed forces. I'm talk by myself. I'm a lone wolf. 
uh, work alone, but I can uh, join many academic sessions to talk about it, the things that maybe a um, big spot maybe don't like. That is wrong for now. For now, maybe I have a question uh, for the uh, uh, Q&A uh, session. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel uh, Tiernan, and we'll keep an eye on you. If you can continue to do what you do, then that means that we're making progress. But if you uh, become quiet, then uh, we'll know that uh, Thailand's in trouble.